All right. Good evening, everyone. Here we are, 5.30. I'm Laurie Ledley from Valley Sleep Center, founder and president, clinical sleep educator. And I am so excited tonight to invite my friends, uh, Jane Reynolds and Kelly Calkins, who are, gosh, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm gonna let them tell, tell you what they are, but they are like, they have their like really crazy, like doctorate degrees in nutritional medicine. And it's like so cool. And I had a consultation a couple of weeks ago and I learned a whole bunch of stuff. And so they're gonna help us learn three simple strategies on how we can get better sleep through nutrition. It's so exciting. So we are gonna do a drawing at the end. You must be present to win. Um, if you're on Facebook, sorry, you needed to sign up for the webinar, but one lucky attendee in the webinar is going to win a nutritional consult with these girls. So um, thank you so much, Kelly and Jane. Um, tell us a little bit about the BCHN. I love your credentials. <laughs> It's a, yeah, we are board certified holistic nutritionists. So we got our board certification through the National Association of Nutrition Professionals. Mm -hmm. Kelly just got hers. I got mine a couple of years ago when I graduated. So it's Doctor, a hard exam. We're glad doctorate, we both passed. Doctorate. <laughs> doctors in nutrition. I love it. <laughs> not, not quite doctors. But... I know, I'm sorry. I probably I read my notes. Um, <laughs> But anyway, we have a great amount of attendees here tonight. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, take it away. I'll be here on standby if you guys need anything. All right. I'm going to share our screen with us and find our presentation and we'll get going. And then feel free to just put your um, chat, your questions in the Q&A or the chat, and we'll get them answered at the end. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining Jane and myself this evening for our webinar. Um, we know that you're really, really busy. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Sorry, our slides are having a time of their own here. They are. I'm concerned that it's going to start running again like crazy. Okay. Okay. Um, we're so glad that you joined us tonight. We know it's a crazy time of year and um, time is precious. Uh, we are really excited to share with you three simple strategies for straightening up your sleep. It is really jam packed with lots of great information and facts. So we're going to jump in and get started. Uh, but before we do, I want to take a moment to introduce uh, Jane and I, for those of you who don't um, know yep. us already, oh, we're having a presentation bug. Give me one second, please. Sorry about that. This has not happened before, but I think it's just a timing issue on the slides. No worries. The girls are doing okay. great. It's the joy of live events, right? Yeah. <laughs> I am not sure because I downloaded the one that you did, and I am not sure. How do we do this without doing that? Um, do well, you, the slides shouldn't be clicking automatically. I'm not sure why there's right. a slide timer on it. Oh, oh, it had a timer, so it's going through. Yeah. Um, can you do presenter view and then just? That's what I'm wondering. That's what we were doing, though. Mm. OK. What did everybody have for lunch? Yeah, <laughs> talk about yourselves. Talk about I just yourselves. had a big breakfast. I actually skipped lunch today because I was very full from a networking breakfast. Oh, fun. I had a quiche. At, oh, um, quiche yeah. is always a winner. Yeah, it was delicious with the salad. So yummy. Yeah, my omelet was like a deconstructed quiche. It was very Mediterranean, sun dried tomatoes, feta, all good things. I found these really cool drinks on Amazon too that are, um, I think they're called Sleep Som or uh, anyway, it's like a little skinny can. So it looks like a cute little like Truly or something cocktail yeah, yeah. just loaded with like, so it only has 10 calories. Okay. And it has like GABA, melatonin, <laughs> the, the uh, whatever that big long word is, um, magnesium. And it's like, it's like a little liquid cocktail for sleep. It was so good. So I had one last night and 
I uh, substituted for wine. You'd be very I was going to say that's a good replacement, right? Okay. Yeah. I think I've it's got it. Relaxing. So what was the sweetener in it? Was it like a stevia or something like that? Probably. I'll get it while, we're, while you guys are presenting and, and I'll show everyone. I don't even think it's stevia. But I think it's like, um, what's that uh, fruit? Monk. Monk fruit? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it, stevia is kind of like, tastes funny sometimes to me. It can be bitter a little bit. Monk fruit, but it was really, it was carbonated. It was really good. Okay. I think Jane worked her magic and got our presentation back right. on track. Thanks yes. for hanging with us, everyone. Yes. yes. Thank really you for appreciate your that. All right. Okay. We already did that piece. So yeah, there we go. Um, so uh, Lori already uh, kind of introduced us um, just to let you know, uh, who we are, what we do. Um, like Jane said, we are board certified holistic nutritionists and our practice is Abundant Life Nutrition and Wellness Center here in Mesa. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at why sleep is so important for the body and our overall health. We're gonna look at how blood sugars and nutrition affect sleep and how sleep hygiene plays a role as well. Now, if you have any questions throughout our time together, please do not hesitate to ask. We'll be sure to address your questions as quickly as possible. We all know that sleep is important, right? It is actually one of the body's four basic needs along with eating, drinking, and breathing. But what happens if you aren't getting the right amount of sleep or if you aren't getting quality sleep? And can you fix sleep? And what in the world does nutrition have to do with sleep? We're going to learn today that nutrition relates to sleep in so many ways. Today, we're gonna to take a look at just three areas blood sugars, specifically carbs, proteins, and healthy fats. And we're going to take a look at nutrition, nutri nutrient deficiencies in the body. And lastly, we're gonna take a look at sleep hygiene. So first let's ask the question, why is sleep so important to the body and overall wellness? Well, there are just certain functions and processes in the body that happen while you're sleeping. So if you aren't getting good sleep or enough sleep, your body can't complete those processes or sometimes even start them at all. During sleep, the immune system is most active. Your immune system is making cells that fight inflammation and that fight infection. It's making antibody cells and it's making immune cells. In fact, sleep is so important to your immune system that one night of bad sleep will decrease your T cells by up to 70% the following day. T cells are immune cells that search out, identify and kill antigens or invaders like viruses that are in the body. And that means that if you're not sleeping well or enough, your immune system is taking a major hit. Other things that the body requires sleep to do are cell repair and growth for muscles, tissues and hormones. It works on insulin regulation to help protect against insulin resistance. And that's also the time when our brain does its processing for the day and prepares for the next day. So it's working on things like memory and learning, concentration, focus, reorganizing, and emotional well being. And sleep is also critical for our hunger hormone regulation. Ghrelin is our feeling hungry hormone and it decreases, while leptin, the feeling full hormone, increases. In fact, when you don't sleep well or enough, you're actually likely to eat on average 900 calories more the following day than if you had proper sleep. And that is absolutely huge. Yep. Now there's definitely a sweet spot for sleep and it's seven to eight hours of sleep every night. And unfortunately, the average person gets 6.8 hours of sleep per night. And at first glance, you might think that that's not so bad because it's pretty close. So surely it can't make that big of a difference, but you'd be wrong. Because when you get less than seven hours of sleep per night, you have an increased risk for high blood pressure, high cortisol, high inflammation, and higher insulin resistance, which leads to type 2 diabetes. Like we just mentioned, you'll overeat an average of 900 calories the next day, and you suppress your immune system by up to 70%. And if that wasn't bad enough at all, it'll also increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. So this is a big deal. 
In the United States alone, one person dies every 36 seconds from a cardiovascular event. So what does that mean? It means that when you get less than seven hours of sleep, you have a 71% increased risk of heart attack or angina and a 45% increased risk of stroke and a 50% increased risk of cardiovascular disease in general and an increased risk of hardening of the arteries. So how does nutrition relate to sleep? Well, like we mentioned in the beginning, it relates in so many ways. What you choose to eat can have a direct impact on the quantity and the quality of the sleep that you're getting. Let's jump in and start with taking a look at how blood sugars impact our sleep. Specifically, we're going to be looking um, in relation to carbs, amino acids, and healthy fats. Before we jump into carbs, carbs, it's really important to point out that not all carbs are created equal. Nutrient dense carbs are great and non-nutritive or empty carbs like processed and packaged foods are basically junk. Carbs can sometimes get a bad rap and keto and super low carb diets are really kind of all the rage right now. But like everything in life, it truly is about balance and moderation. There's a study of healthy sleepers uh, that was done ranging from people 18 to 35 years old, and it demonstrated that eating a carbohydrate-based high glycemic index meal four hours before bedtime had a dramatic impact on sleep. The sleep onset latency, or how long it takes you to fall asleep, had a 48.6 reduction compared to those eating a low glycemic index meal. Basically having too low of a carbohydrate intake resulted in difficulty maintaining sleep. But this does not mean that the more carbs, the better. Other studies have indicated, uh, including one recently published by Gangwish, uh, that a high glycemic index or high glycemic loads are high risk factors for insomnia. Remember, balance and moderation really matter. This is especially true if you happen to be female and menopausal, where a high glycemic index diet is directly associated with increased insomnia. Um, this will in turn lead to higher consumption of dietary sugar and non-nutritive carbs like Jane just talked about with us. Um, when you don't get enough sleep, it really does set you up for poor dietary choices. Now, these two studies show us one thing. They show us that nutrient-dense complex carbs in moderation have a place in our diets when it comes to sleep. And like all things, balance and moderation matter, we shouldn't be demonizing a food group. So what are some good food sources for healthy, complex, nutrient-dense carbs? You want to be looking at foods like whole grains, quinoa, buckwheat are great examples of that. Fiber-packed fruits like apples, berries, and pears are great choices. Um, Fiber-packed veggies like broccoli, leafy greens like collard greens or Swiss chard are great options. Beans and lentils are also really good choices for those complex nutrient-dense carbs. Now, depending on your individual dietary needs, you may need to focus on lower glycemic index carbs like asparagus and broccoli and cauliflower. Winter squash is another great option. You can still do things like beans and lentils. You just really have to pay attention to serving sizes. Next, we're gonna look at your healthy fats. Healthy fats are so important for your body and for your overall health and wellness. Studies show that diets deficient in omega-3s, especially DHA and EPA, negatively affect sleep by affecting the melatonin rhythm and the circadian clock functions inside your body. There's also a positive correlation between omega-3 fatty acid composition in gluteal adipose tissue, that's the fat tissue in your glutes, and improvements in slow wave sleep and rapid eye movement sleep among obese patients with obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Another study involving healthy children concluded that higher blood uh, DHA levels are associated with a significantly improved sleep wellness. The takeaway here is that if you that you want to have a diet that's high in omega-3 fatty acids if you want to improve your sleep health. Unfortunately, most Americans are consuming way too many omega-6 fatty acids and not nearly enough omega-3 fatty acids. Not all omega-6 fatty acids are bad. Walnuts, pine nuts, sunflower seeds, they're all great. It's the inflammatory ones like canola oil, corn oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, and safflower oil that we need to avoid or significantly limit. So if you're eating processed packaged foods, then you're eating unhealthy inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids. 
Conventional beef is another source, but grass-fed beef has a much healthier, heart-friendly ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. So if you're gonna eat red meat, make sure that it's grass-fed. The proper ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids is approximately one to one. But unfortunately, in the United States, the average person eating the standard American diet is eating a 15 to one ratio. It's no wonder that we're a nation plagued by chronic sickness and health issues. That ratio directly correlates to chronic inflammatory diseases like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, cardiovascular disease, obesity, inflammatory bowel disease, and rheumatoid arthritis. When you are inflamed, the whole body suffers and so does your sleep. Can't tell you how many people that I've spoken to that have told me they've woken up in the night because they're in pain. Mm -hmm. So a four week double blind study of 100 Alzheimer's patients where participants were given a supplement with four to one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids demonstrated improved sleep when compared to the placebo group. Some of the healthy food sources for your fats are your omega-3s. We can find those in salmon and scallops, sardines, shrimp, cod, and tuna, flax seeds, walnuts, cauliflower, and cabbage. And our omega-6s are found in walnuts, hemp seeds, sunflower seeds, peanut butter, avocado oil, and eggs. Okay, so now let's shift gears and take a look at some amino acids. First of all, what is an amino acid? Many people are familiar with the term, but don't really know what it is. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. Protein is not an amino acid, but it's made from amino acids. For optimal health, the body requires 20 different amino acids. The body is able to manufacture 11 of them on its own, and the remaining nine must be obtained through diet. These nine amino acids are called essential amino acids because the body cannot make them, and it has to get it from external sources. It should be noted that just because the body can make an amino acid does not necessarily mean that the amount that it's making is sufficient. It may still need to be increased through diet and or supplementation. The amino acids that we're looking at today are made within the body with the exception of one, tryptophan. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid and must be obtained through diet and or supplementation. So let's start with tryptophan. We're gonna go down a little rabbit hole, but bear with me. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid, and now we know what that means. It is also a precursor for serotonin. So what comes to mind when you hear serotonin? Happiness, mood, sleep. How about all of the above? Serotonin is super important for your overall sense of wellness. It stabilizes our mood, promotes feelings of happiness, allows brain cells and nervous system cells to communicate. It helps with digesting. It plays a big role in sleep. It basically controls your body's sleep-wake behavior. That means it's needed to both increase wakefulness and increase NREM sleep. NREM sleep is non-rapid eye movement sleep. NREM sleep is what lets your body wind down, relax, get deep sleep, and feel refreshed. It is also what allows the body to heal, recover from an illness, problem solve, and deal with stress. This is super important stuff. Another important role of serotonin in the body is that it is a precursor for melatonin. Now, most of us are familiar with melatonin and how it benefits sleep, but since we're going down this rabbit hole, let's poke around just a little bit more. Melatonin is what helps regulate your circadian rhythm and keep your sleep-wake cycle synced up with day and night. Basically, melatonin is what tells your body it's time to sleep. It typically rises about two hours before bedtime this is why you feel your body wind down and you know when it's time to head to bed. Here's the point of this rabbit hole. None of this happens without tryptophan. No serotonin, no NREM, no melatonin, no quality sleep. Tryptophan is super important for achieving quality sleep. So that was a bit of a rabbit hole for tryptophan, but totally worth it to understand its role in sleep. So when it comes to food sources for tryptophan, um, some really great choices are gonna be shrimp, cremini, mushrooms, cod, tuna, chicken, scallops, spinach, turkey, which is really probably what comes to mind whenever people hear tryptophan, lamb, grass-fed beef, calf's liver, sardines, and salmon. The next amino acid that we're gonna take a look at is GABA. This amino acid is a little bit different because it is a non-protein amino acid. 
GABA is a neurotransmitter in the brain. It's the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter for the central nervous system. Basically what that means is it's like a natural sedative. It allows you to find balance in times of stress, to have peace of mind, and it can improve concentration and induce sleep. Now that doesn't mean that if you take GABA during the day, you fall asleep, it'll help you to calm down, to feel peaceful and relaxed. And that's why GABA can be beneficial for sleep because it can be really hard to fall asleep or stay asleep if you're feeling anxious or stressed. Decreased GABA levels are directly linked to disrupted sleep and insomnia. In one study, people with insomnia had GABA levels almost 30% lower than people without insomnia. Another study where 40 patients with insomnia were given 300 milligrams of GABA for four weeks resulted in decreased sleep latency and increased sleep efficacy. And that means that they fell asleep more quickly and the sleep was more restful. And GABA helps the body to fall asleep and stay asleep. Some of our sources for GABA include all your lovely cruciferous veggies like broccoli and cauliflower, cabbage and Brussels sprouts. Adzuki beans, mushrooms, spinach, tomatoes, buckwheat, peas, sweet potatoes, sprouted grains, brown rice, and white tea. The next amino acid that we're going to take a look at is glutamine. This amino acid helps with gut health and gut function. It is an instrumental supplement when addressing leaky gut. Glutamine also supports and strengthens the immune system as it's a critical fuel source for immune cells like white blood cells. If you don't have enough glutamine in your body, your body will actually break down muscle so it can cannibalize and use the glutamine in the muscle. It's an important amino acid for the body as a whole, but for today's class, we care about how it helps with sleep. Glutamine is another natural sedative in the body. It can be helpful when you are feeling wired or feeling like you can't relax enough to sleep. It's also helpful in lessening anxiety and depression. Many people connect depression with sleeping all the time or sleeping too much, but depression often comes with insomnia as a symptom. In fact, 75% of people experiencing depression struggle with insomnia. Glutamine is also used um, to produce GABA in the body, and we just learned about how GABA can positively affect your sleep. By supporting the entire pathway in the body, glutamine to GABA, you're giving your body a more complete and comprehensive support. So some great food sources for glutamine are cabbage, again, the cruciferous. Uh, we've got beef, chicken, fish, beets, and beans. All right, so that was a lot of information. Now we are gonna take a look at how nutrient deficiencies impact sleep. We're gonna take a look at vitamins, minerals, and herbs. So let's take a look at vitamins D, C, E, B6, and B12. Vitamin D deficiencies have been directly linked to sleep disorders. Deficiencies affect sleep regulation in the brain, the production of melatonin, and circadian rhythms. And studies have shown that vitamin D deficiency is associated with a higher risk of sleep disorders, including poor sleep quality and short sleep duration. Vitamin C, a study compared people with short sleep and those with longer sleep and concluded that short sleepers consumed less vitamin C. Another cross-sectional study of adults in the UK suggested that there's a relationship between fruit and vegetable intake and sleep wellness, and long sleepers have high plasma levels of vitamin C. This antioxidant also plays a big role in boosting sleep health and helping reduce the likelihood of waking up through the night. Vitamin E is essential for the protection of health and function of the brain, and it's important since, uh, which is important since lack of sleep causes problems with short and long-term memory. Vitamin E helps to protect against memory impairment from sleep loss. People with sleep apnea often have low levels of vitamin E, and studies have shown that vitamin E in combination with vitamin C and other antioxidants can improve nighttime breathing and sleep quality in people with obstructive sleep apnea. Vitamin B6 can help with dream recall and vividness. It can help with insomnia and depression since it helps with the production of serotonin and melatonin. And B12 helps improve the sleep-wake circadian rhythm. So here are some great foods that you can incorporate to help you get these vitamins into your diet. Vitamin D we're going to find in shrimp, sardines, cod, and eggs. We'll find vitamin C in bell peppers, parsley, broccoli, strawberries, cauliflower, romaine, lettuce, and Brussels sprouts. Vitamin E is found in sunflower seeds, Swiss chard, almonds, spinach, collard greens, kale, and bell peppers. 
B6 is found in spinach, bell peppers, garlic, tuna, cauliflower, bananas, broccoli, asparagus, and cabbage. And B12 is found in calf liver, sardines, venison, shrimp, scallops, salmon, grass-fed beef, lamb, cod, and eggs. Now, if you are supplementing with a B complex, we would remind you to take it early in the day because taking them too close to bedtime can interfere with sleep. They have a tendency to rev up your energy rather than help you to settle down. Mm -hmm. And as with all supplementation, more is not better. Better is better. So talk to your practitioner before adding supplements so that you can dose them properly, especially true of vitamin B6 because that in excessive levels can actually cause insomnia. But like everything else in the body and in life, it's all about balance. Yep. So there are a few other nutrients and herbs that can really be beneficial for sleep. So we're going to take a look at those now. First one is magnesium. Magnesium is great because it relaxes the body and it helps to release tension. It also helps in the production of melatonin. Chamomile uh, is an herb that is really helpful in helping to relieve anxiety and calming the body. Calcium is actually required for the brain to use tryptophan. We learned about how important tryptophan is for sleep. And it, uh, it's critical for allowing your brain to actually make the melatonin. You have to have that connection and that balance. Potassium is also uh, really important. It helps you stay asleep and it promotes that slow wave or that deep sleep. Ashwagandha is one of my favorites. Ashwagandha is an adaptogen, which means it is an herb that helps the body respond to stress. Ashwagandha promotes relaxation, it eases stress, and it acts on GABA receptors. It helps you fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, and have higher quality of sleep. After taking ashwagandha for six weeks, participants in one study described their sleep as being 72% better on average just from ashwagandha. So when it comes to food sources for these uh, nutrients, magnesium is pretty easy to find in uh, green foods. So Swiss chard, spinach, broccoli, pumpkin seeds is a really great source of magnesium as well. Uh, chamomile, uh, you're going to look for an organic tea op op optimally, uh, just because you want to limit toxicity in the body. Um, so it can either be a standalone tea or in a blend, like a sleepy time or a nighttime blend. Calcium is going to be in your dark green leafy vegetables like spinach, collard greens, basil, Swiss chard, kale. It's also in cinnamon, which is this time of year, a delicious way to get calcium added into a dish. Potassium, again, your greens, Swiss chard is going to be a great option for that. Spinach, broccoli, cremini mushrooms, uh, romaine, celery, tomatoes, summer squash, avocado. Uh, one of my go-to for potassium and for fiber and fats. And then ashwagandha, my personal favorite. Um, you can get ashwagandha that is in a tea blend. I prefer in a phyto liquid capsule or an herbal capsule just because it is more concentrated. And you can find that either in a blend of adaptogens or just standalone. You can safely take between 2,000 and 3,000 milligrams of ashwagandha a day, especially if you're time, in times of stress or you're dealing with adrenal fatigue. Uh, but we always recommend starting slow and increasing your dose until you find your sweet spot. You don't want to give your body more than what it needs. Um, one of my favorite ashwagandha supplements is by Gaia Herbs Professional Solutions, and it's an ashwagandha liquid phytocap. The last thing that we are going to look at today is the importance of sleep hygiene, which can be easily overlooked, but it's just as important to sleep as addressing blood sugars and nutrient deficiencies. Sleep hygiene is basically your sleep habits or your routine leading up to sleep, including your sleep environment. It's what you do, what you don't do, and how consistent you are about it. So if your sleep hygiene is not up to par, you may be unknowingly sabotaging your sleep. Sleep hygiene can affect how fast you fall asleep as well as your ability to stay asleep. Poor sleep hygiene results in having low energy, feeling tired all the time, decreased motivation, and changes in emotional well being. It also has some cognitive impacts like having trouble concentrating, focusing, remembering, making poor decisions, or having trouble making decisions and uh, headaches as well. So where do I start? Well, sleep hygiene is all about routine and consistency, starting with setting and keeping a regular and consistent bedtime and wake time. If you're consistent some nights, but not other nights, 
you stay up extra late, um, then you're going to experience sleep jet lag. It's very similar to traditional jet lag, but it's triggered by inconsistent sleep schedules instead of traveling. Next, you really should budget 30 minutes for your bedtime routine. It takes the body between 30 and 45 minutes to wind down and having a consistent 30 minute bedtime routine will allow your body to and mind to wind down before you climb into bed. And doing that's gonna increase your sleep quality and quantity uh, as well. And lastly, you wanna create your bedtime routine and be consistent because it takes 18 to 30 days to make a habit. That's why consistency is key. So if you need to work towards a better earlier bedtime, you can move it in 15 minute increments every two to three days. And that's gonna allow your body to slowly adjust to your new sleep schedule. We want you to avoid laying in bed, wanting to sleep because we know that it's so important to just fall asleep. So we start worrying about it. We end up freaking out and stressing out that we're still awake and we haven't fallen asleep mm -hmm. and that's counterproductive. So slow, steady, sustainable change is the way to go. Now, as we work towards healthy sleep hygiene, we want to make sure we are aware of and avoiding poor sleep hygiene habits. You want to avoid screen time and anything that has blue lights before bedtime, or you can get blue light blocking glasses so that you can avoid overstimulating the brain before bedtime. You also want to avoid taking late afternoon naps and long naps as both can throw off your sleep cycles and will work against you in creating healthier sleep habits. Now, if you are dealing with adrenal issues or fatigue and you're desperate for a nap, try to keep it to 30 minutes or less and try to have it happen before 2 to 3 p.m. Vigorous exercise or other stimulation before bedtime can actually work against you as well. You want to do more intense exercise at least three hours away from bedtime. You want to shoot for evening exercises, uh, being things like yoga, stretching, walking, just calming things. Also, you want to avoid caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine. All of these are notorious for disturbing sleep patterns. Both caffeine and nicotine are stimulants. They delay your body's sleep clock, determining when to fall asleep, negatively impacting sleep quality and quantity. Nicotine will also lead to other sleep issues like sleep apnea. If caffeine cannot be avoided completely, shoot for no caffeine within at least six hours of bedtime. Studies have shown that consuming caffeine within six hours of bedtime will still cause an increase in sleep disturbances. Likewise, nicotine should be completely avoided if possible. If not, you want nicotine no less than two hours before bedtime. That buffer really makes a difference. Over 20% of Americans regularly use alcohol to help them sleep. Alcohol is a depressant that may make you fall asleep faster, but it actually shortens your REM cycle and it disrupts your circadian rhythms. This means that you will actually get less sleep overall and the sleep you get will be restless sleep. Lastly, food choices matter. At night, we want less food so that our body isn't working all night trying to digest. Our body can do just one thing at a time, digest or repair. Knowing that sleep is the only time the body can perform certain functions, don't let digestion steal that time away. You want to try to avoid uh, foods that are high carb, empty carbs, high fat, acidic, or spicy. Okay, now that we talked about what we need to clean up and avoid, let's shift gears and talk about what we want to focus on for creating good sleep hygiene. You want to make sure that your bedroom is cool, dark, and quiet. Research shows that optimal temperatures for sleeping is around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. You wanna get as close to that as you comfortably can. You wanna make sure that there is no ambient light or external noise. You want your room basically as dark as possible and as quiet as possible. Now, if you're like me and you cannot sleep when it's just silent, use a fan for white noise or invest in a sleep noise machine. Also, it's important to keep electronics, especially phones, out of the bedroom or at least away from the bed. Phones are a constant source of EMF, totally messes with your body, and they are a source for sleep distraction and disruption. Lights, noise, they vibrate, even if you have it on silent. Workspaces is another area that should be removed from the bedroom if at all possible. The bedroom is supposed to be a sanctuary of relaxation and having a visual reminder of work, what you did, what's waiting for you still to do is anything but relaxing. These are not the thoughts we want bouncing around in our heads as we head into bed. If you don't have a separate space, try to have it as out of sight as possible. 
Herbal teas are a fantastic addition to sleep hygiene. Many options contain adaptogens like ashwagandha that help the body process stress and promote relaxation in the body. Deep breathing exercises are another terrific way to oxygenate the body, release stress and promote relaxation and shift the body from sympathetic, which is fight and flight, to parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. You wanna make sure that you're doing abdominal breathing and not breathing from the chest. Your abdomen should rise and fall, not your chest. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. Proper deep breathing will help you fall asleep faster and sleep better. Aromatherapy is another great addition. Oils like lavender, Roman chamomile, and sandalwood are all great options to either diffuse or spray on your bedding. Speaking of bedding, you want to make sure that your bed, your pillow, and the actual bedding that you're sleeping on are comfortable. Some of the other things that can help improve your sleep hygiene are your activity level because sedentary lifestyles have been linked to an increased risk for insomnia and other disturbances to sleep, which makes sense because you're not moving your body, you're not burning any energy during the day. Well, that's an easy fix. Get more movement in your day. Walk before you go to work. Walk on or after your breaks. Um, park further away from your stores or from your office. Um, if the store is close enough, uh, walk or bike to it. If you have a dog, make walking it daily a priority. Your dog and your circadian rhythm will both love you for it. Fresh air and sunshine are both very important to the body and its natural rhythm. So start your day by spending a few moments outside. If your climate doesn't allow for morning uh, time outside, then do it in the afternoon. Clean, fresh water and plenty of it will also help you sleep. Since you should limit fluids after 7 p.m., getting your hydration during the day is even more important. Proper hydration directly impacts the quality of your sleep, and you want to aim for half to three quarters of your body weight in fluid ounces daily, depending on climate and activity levels. Even when your room is dark and quiet, you may still benefit from investing in a good sleep mask and some earplugs. Just because your room is dark and quiet when you go to bed doesn't mean that the sun will find, won't find its way in there as soon as it can. So the birds chirping uh, like there's no tomorrow might wake you up. So good sleep hygiene is about falling asleep as much as it is about staying asleep. And then lastly, depending on your situation and your biochemistry, you may need to add in some pharmaceutical grade holistic supplements to help support your sleep cycle. Melatonin is a great example of this. Proper dosing can help reset and retrain your circadian rhythm and sleep patterns, but it should be noted that it's not really a long-term solution and it doesn't take the place of good sleep hygiene. It's a tool towards bringing the uh, body back into its proper sleep patterns. Right. Whew. That was a ton of information. Sleep is just so incredibly important for overall health and overall well being. And the truth is that when sleep is off, everything else feels the impact and suffers. Small changes we make with our food choices, our nutrient focus, and our sleep hygiene habits can add to really big changes and improvements. I want to thank you all again for joining us today and choosing to make your health and your well being a priority. We hope that you're feeling empowered with ways that you can start to support your sleep in a better way. We know that often sleep dysfunction can be hard to figure out, especially when you're not sure what the root cause of the dysfunction in the body is. That can just be overwhelming. If you would like help and support in your wellness journey, Jane and I are here to help. Before we wrap up, um, we'll go into to question time. Um, but like we said, we know that change, especially when it comes to diet and lifestyle and habits can be overwhelming and hard. And we're here to support you every step of the way and help you navigate what your path to wellness looks like. Um, so we can go ahead and start. Yeah.